Hi, everybody. Oh, I love seeing you. I wish I could see you in person in Bible class, but things are a little different right now. I guess you guys aren't going to school, so you can't see your friends there. And maybe even your holiday celebrations have been a little different. But I want us to talk together about how God says that we should handle the different things when things are a little different. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10, God has Isaiah tell us. He says, I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. You know, when things are going along like they always do, everything's just normal in my life, things pretty clear, I can see God working in my life, helping me in my life. It's pretty easy to see that. But when things aren't quite as clear, like now, things are a little different. I know that God is holding my right hand. He says not to be afraid, and he says he'll help me. But I know he's there. It's just not always easy to see him working in my life but I know he's there. I know he's there. It's just a little bit harder to see him. You know what? I'm glad we're together because we're gonna talk about Jacob's big family and how there were times in their life when God was helping them, but it was hard for them to see it. You guys remember, Jacob lived in Haran with his four wives. Rachel and Leah, and Bilhah and Zippah. And he had 11 sons at this time. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, and Joseph. Well, God came to Jacob in a dream and said, it's time to go home. You need to go back to Canaan. So, Jacob packed up everybody and all the animals that he had and his whole household, and he headed back to Canaan but he wasn't really, really excited. He was afraid. Do you remember why he had left Canaan? He had left Canaan running for his life. He had tricked his twin brother Esau. Now, Jacob, the name means deceiver or trickster, and that's exactly what he'd done. Do you remember? He had tricked Esau out of his birthright, and then, he had tricked his father, Isaac, into giving Jacob the oldest son blessing that belonged to Esau. Esau should have gotten two times every, of all of the things that the daddy, Jacob, daddy Isaac had. But now the blessing went to Jacob, not Esau. He was so mad, he said he was going to kill him. Remember? Remember, that's why Jacob ran away. And now God says, go back. Oh, he heads home, but he was afraid. But you know what? Even when you can't see it, God is helping him. On the way, the Bible tells us that God's angels met them. Hmm. So they kept going. They get closer. He's still afraid of Esau. I would be. For what he'd done, I would be afraid. So we got a little bit closer and he set messengers. And he said, go tell my brother Esau that I've got, I've got my own sheep and goats and cows and, and donkeys and camels. See, I'm not coming back to take yours, to take the blessing that I should have taken, that I took from you. I, I, I'm coming with my own stuff. Well, the messengers go and they see Esau, but they come back. And he says, did you see him? And he said, they said, yeah, but he's coming with 400 men. Mm. Esau thought he's coming and he's still mad. He's going to attack us. He's going to attack me and my family. And so he decided he's going to take everything he has and he divided them into two camps. He said, half of you and the animals go stay over there and half of you and the animals go stay over there. That way, if Esau comes and attacks, at least one of the groups could be safe and escape. 
And then after he did that, he prayed to God. He prayed to God. And here's what he says. Here's what he says. We hear, read it in Genesis chapter 35. He says, Dear God, you know what? We read it in chapter 32. He says, O oh God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, you said to me, return to your country and to your kindred that I may do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the deeds of steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For with only my staff, I crossed the Jordan and now I have become two camps. Please deliver me from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him that he may come and attack me, the mothers and the children. And you said, I will surely do you good and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So he told God exactly what he was feeling. He said, I'm afraid. And you said you would bless me. He asked God to help him. Well, then he sent gifts. He sent 400 no, no, 540 animals, sheep, goats, camels, cows, cats, donkeys, uh, 540 animals to Esau, trying to appease him. And then he took his family, his wives and his children, and he went across the stream and he set up camp for them there to keep them safe. He left them and he came back to camp all by himself. And he stayed there that night. During the night, something wonderful happened. The Bible says a man, another time, might have been an angel. You know, we don't know exactly who it was. But it's say an angel came into the camp and a man, it says the man, they wrestled, he and Jacob, all night long. All night, neither one won. And just as it was becoming daybreak, the man reached down and grabbed Jacob right at his hip and he pushed it out of joint. Oh, and he looked at him and he says, what's your name? Jacob answered, Jacob. And he said, no, from now your name will be Israel because you have striven, you have fought with God and with man and you have prevailed. And then Jacob asked that he bless him. The angel, the man did, and then he left. That night, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And later, God will talk to him about that. But I think his heart was changed a little bit too. We'll talk about that. So that next morning, guess what's happening? Esau's coming with his 400 men. Jacob sees it. He puts all his family behind him, his wives and his daughters. And he walks, oh, don't you know he was scared? He goes closer to Esau and he bows down to the ground, all the way to the ground. And he goes a little bit further and he bows all the way down to the ground. He goes a little further. He does that seven times before he gets to Esau. Don't you know he was scared? And there came Esau running toward him and he hugged him. Esau hugged him and they kissed and they, oh, don't you know they were glad to see each other. And then Esau said, who are all these people with you? And Jacob introduced his brother to his wives and his children. And Esau said, what, what are all these animals? What is all of this? Jacob said, look, I'm giving these to you as a gift. I don't need them. And this is where I think his heart has started to change toward God. He said, God has graciously given me all these things, these children and these animals, these gifts. And I want to give these gifts to you. He finally talked Esau into accepting the gifts. And they were together for a while. And then Esau said, it's time for him to go to his home. And Jacob said, well, I'm going to take a little bit, but then I'll go. But I'll go toward my home in Canaan. And so as he went to Canaan, he went from area to area to area. And where he did, he would build an altar to God. And God told him, I want you to go to Bethel. I want you to go back to where I very first met you, where I very first appeared to you when you were running away from home. And so he did. 
And when he was there, God gave him a blessing. Jacob came and he built an altar to God. And this is what God says to him. He says, this time in chapter 39, 35, God appeared to Jacob again. And he said, your name is Jacob. No longer shall you be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall come from you. Oh, that's the promise to Abraham and Isaac. And kings shall come from your own body. Ooh, that's new. A king shall come from their family. The land that I gave to Isaac and Jacob, Jacob, the land that I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I give to you a great nation and a land. And I will give the land to your offspring after you. So the promise that God had made to Abraham and Isaac, he made to Jacob. You know, I had said earlier that I thought Jacob's heart changed that night. Well, I think it did. Because at Bethel, he told all the people in his household, he said, bring all of your false gods, your idols, to me. And they did. If you remember, we talked about how well, people thought wrongly that these silly idols could bring them good luck or blessings. So they brought them to him and he hid them there underneath a tree. And he gave God the credit for the blessings that he had received and for being with him. He knew that it hadn't come from his own Jacob, trickster, tricks, and his own deceit. It had come from God's blessing. His heart had changed too. Well, they were in Canaan. They were in Canaan, his whole big family. And as they traveled around, Jacob had another son, a 12th son. His mother, Rachel, while she was giving birth to him, she, she died during childbirth. And Jacob named the baby Benjamin. So now there are 12 sons. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, and ben, Joseph and Benjamin. But he had 12 sons, but the sons knew that one of them was Daddy Jacob's favorite. It was Joseph. It was Joseph. And they didn't like him. Jacob gave Joseph a very special coat. And it had a lot of colors in it. It was a coat of many colors. The brothers hated Joseph. They were jealous of him. Yet the Bible says they couldn't even speak kindly to him. Hmm. Well, Joseph was with the brothers. Let's see, he was with Dan and Naphtali and Gad and Asher one day and they were taking care of his father's flock and he came back and he tattled. He told his dad that they weren't doing a good job. Well, that didn't help. They hated him even more. Then Joseph had a dream. Actually, he had two dreams. The dreams made him hate them, hate Joseph even more. First dream. He and his brothers were in the field, gathering sheaves, tying them, the stalks of grain, they tied them so they would dry. And he said, all of your sheaves bowed down to mine. What? The brother said, we're not gonna bow down to you. Then he said, all the stars and the moon, the stars, the sun and the moon, hmm, all bow down to my star. Daddy, Daddy Jacob said, the, the moon and the sun, uh, my, your mom and I and all your brothers, the stars are going to bow down to you? Oh, no. The brothers hated him. They hated him. They hated him so much that later they made a plan. It was awful. Joseph told his brothers about the plan about his dreams. They hated him. And then his dad said, hey, your brothers are out at Shechem taking care of the flock. I want you to go check on them. So 
he takes off to go check on him. And the brothers could see him from far, far away. Uh-oh, they said, oh, here comes the dreamer. Let's kill him and throw him down in a pit and say an animal devoured him. His own brothers, that was their plan. So Reuben said, no, 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 no. Let's not kill him, let's just put him in this pit. He planned later to go get him and take him back to their father. But as he came closer, as Joseph got closer to him, they took him. They took his robe off of him, his coat of many colors. And they, the Bible says they threw him down in this pit. It was in the wilderness. There wasn't even any water down there for him to drink. And then, like it's no big deal that they had done that, they sat down and had something to eat. Well, Judah says, hey, Look, there's some traitors, some Ishmaelite traitors. They're, they're on their way. They came with their camels. They were on the way to Egypt. And he said, you know, what good is it? What profit is it for us if we kill him? Why don't we sell him? And that's what they did. The traitors came and they sold their brother Joseph to him for 20 shekels of silver. And those traders took Joseph away from his family all the way to Egypt, you know, probably about 250 miles away from where they were. Well, Reuben had planned on saving Joseph. And when he came back and saw him, he said that he was gone. He came back and he said, where is he? They told him what they'd done. He said, what am I gonna do? So they took Joseph's coat that they'd taken off of him, they dipped it in blood, and they took it back to their father, and they said, look what we found. Do you know whose it is? And he said, it's my son's. An animal must have killed him. And he mourned. He was so sad. No, it, the Bible says that no one could comfort him. He mourned for days. Well, those traitors, they did take Joseph. They took him all the way to Egypt. And we got to Egypt. He was sold again. He was sold as a slave to a man named Potiphar. Potiphar was the captain of the guard of Pharaoh's army. Or the captain of Pharaoh's guard. Pharaoh was the ruler of Egypt. So Potiphar would have been a very powerful man. And there was poor Joseph sold again. Hmm. Things aren't quite so clear. Down in a pit, hated by his brothers, sold by his brothers, taken to Egypt, sold again. I can't see God helping Joseph. But the Bible tells us that he was. The Bible tells us the Bible tells us that in chapter 39, verse two, the Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man in the house of his Egyptian master. The Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for jo Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and in field. And Potiphar left all that he had to Joseph's care. He didn't care about anything. He let Joseph in charge of his entire house. <sighs> here you are a slave again, or here you are a slave in Egypt. Hard to see God helping you, but he was. God was blessing him, even as a slave. He became a successful man in Potiphar's house. You know, Potiphar had him in charge of everything except for his wife, of course. But Potiphar's wife liked Joseph. She thought he was handsome. And she every day asked Joseph over and over again to sleep with her, to have, to have sex with her like only a husband and wife can, like only Mr. and Mrs. Potiphar should. 
Joseph said, no, I can't do that. Potiphar's made me in charge of everything. He's only kept you from me. I can't do that and sin against God. Well, Mrs. Potiphar, she grabbed onto Joseph's coat, his garment, his clothes. And Joseph said, no. And she held onto his coat. He had to run away. Well, when he did, she came up with a plan. And she told the men of the house that Joseph had come in and tried to have sex with her. That wasn't true. She lied. Joseph hadn't sinned. But he was getting blamed for it. Things aren't normal. He hadn't done anything wrong. But Potiphar believed his wife and he had Joseph put in prison. Poor Joseph. Sold. Put in a pit by his own brothers. Sold. Taken 250 miles away. Sold again. Lied to. Lied about and put in prison. Things aren't looking good. I, I, God said he would help, but do you see it? Do you think Jacob had a hard, or Joseph had a hard time seeing God helping him? But he was, he was helping him, even in prison. And we're gonna learn about that next time. I can't wait to finish the story with you. But remember this week that God is holding your right hand and he's helping you just like he helped Jacob and Joseph. I can't wait to see you guys again. Bye.